Did Jesus really teach Christ consciousness? In the New Age, it's believed that Christ merely refers to a state of self-actualization and enlightenment, the highest form of consciousness that any human being can attain. And that Jesus Christ, the person, actually reached that state of consciousness. And he taught us how to do it, but those books, those texts, were taken out of the biblical canon and introduced a more dogmatic religious doctrine to enslave mankind. Is this true? Is it true that Jesus was not the perfect, sinless, incarnation of the Creator, the Son of God, but merely a human being who through his teachings and techniques ascended his consciousness to the highest state, the Christed state of consciousness. Well, first, let's look at a couple scriptures before we begin. In Philippians 2, verse 5 and 7, it says this, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Now those are just a couple verses about the mind of Christ from the scriptures. But I also want to show you what other teachers, other websites, other organizations believe about this Christ consciousness. Yogapedia.com writes, Although it can be interpreted in a number of ways, a common understanding is that Christ consciousness is the state of consciousness in which a person has found self-realization and unity with God or the divine. It may also be used as a synonym for the yogic and Hindu concept of samadhi, or deep spiritual bliss. All that an individual needs in order to experience Christ consciousness is the will and capacity to receive it, an open mind, and a dedication to any spiritual practice. This may be as simple as following a new way of conscious thought in order to become a more compassionate, patient, or tolerant person. The means by which one achieves this is not important in reaching Christ consciousness. The Institute of Christ Consciousness.org writes, the highest state of intellectual development and emotional maturity is sometimes termed as the Christed state because it represents the sacredness and purity of the individual who has achieved it. Jesus achieved this in his human life and was given this term as a part of his name and recognition of his achievement in this spiritual status. This path is open to anyone, regardless of their religious tradition, if and when we are open to become a living vessel of love, truth, and goodness on the planet and actively strive to attain it. This is not a term used exclusively in the Christian religion, nor does it mean that you must adhere to the Christian belief system to attain this state. All of the world's religious traditions offer a path to achieving this Christed status, and people are free to find their way in the context of their religious choice. Another book, known as A Course in Miracles, which has sold over 2.5 million copies and is promoted by Oprah Winfrey, on their website reads this, There is no need for help to enter heaven, for you have never left. But there is need for help beyond yourself as you are, circumscribed by false beliefs of your identity, which God alone established in reality. The name of Jesus is the name of the one who was a man, but saw the face of Christ in all his brothers and remembered God. So he became identified with Christ, a man no longer, but at one with God. In his complete identification with the Christ, the perfect Son of God, his one creation and his happiness, forever like himself and one with him, Jesus became what all of you must be. Is he the Christ? Oh yes, along with you. He will remain with you to lead you from the hell you made to God. Now clearly you can see this whole concept of Christ consciousness takes one from believing that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by Him, to now there's many ways to God. There's many ways to the Father. It doesn't matter what belief system, doesn't matter what religious system you might be born into or believe completely negating the fact that there are historical facts that they differ upon, that there are clear doctrines that they differ upon, the true morality that they preach, what is 
good and what is bad is completely debated amongst these different religions. They're, they're, they're not all the same. They're not all the same. But it's very easy to think they're all the same until you study their differences, until you study what they don't agree with, until you study which is the true one, which is the true religious system, or what are the true religious texts. Once you dive into that, the whole New Age idea of everyone's reaching this Christed state, everyone's reaching this godhood, becomes less believable. However, since there's using this scripture about the mind of Christ and using that to say that this is Christ consciousness and this is really what he taught and in the Council of Nasai they took out these books, it's easy to kind of fall into this belief that Jesus was merely teaching this form of Christ consciousness and it matches with the Hindu, with the Buddhists of reaching nirvana, samadhi, the bliss, becoming one with God. It's like yoga, yoking oneself to the God consciousness, Brahman. And it all aligns and it all seems like everyone's teaching the same thing and we just need to look for the similarities, not the differences, so we can be more tolerant, compassionate, and live in peace here on earth. Yes, peace on earth and striving for peace in all situations is very good. But striving for truth, defending truth, is more important. Making peace with a murderer, making peace with a child pedophile, child molester is not what you want to do. You want to hold firm to the truth of what is good and what is right and establish the world around that and bring people into that to bring true peace. I want to give you seven points why this Christ consciousness is not biblical and it's not scriptural. Point number one, Jesus did not present himself as some great moral teacher guiding people to a Christ consciousness. He was crucified because he claimed to be the only begotten son of God. That's why everyone was upset at him. How could you claim this? That's blasphemous to claim that you are the son of God. In John chapter 3, verses 15 through 18, we read this. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the son of man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. The scriptures are very clear that Jesus was crucified precisely for criticizing and reacting negatively to the established religious system of his day. He rebuked the hypocrites. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 34, we read this, You brood of vipers, how can you speak good when you are evil? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. He commanded the sinners to stop sinning. He didn't fluff around tolerance for every person and every moral conduct or system of beliefs. No, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. He had a specific code of morality that he preached, that he taught, and he claimed that he was the Son of God. Not that you can all become the same being that I am. Now, he was born of the Virgin Mary. Were you born of a virgin? Were you born from the Holy Spirit and a virgin? How Christ was born into this world? No. You're born through a biological male and a biological female. The sperm fertilizes the egg. The zygote is formed. You went through that process. Jesus Christ didn't go through that process. He did not go through that process and then reach some state of consciousness. He is inherently different than you and I because he is the perfect sinless lamb of God. He is the Messiah sent to save the world, to save those who believe in him. Point number two is this. Jesus warned twice in Matthew 24 that there will be many people claiming to be Christ in the end times. They'll say, I am Christ. This is what we read, starting in verse four. And Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you'll hear of wars and rumor of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. And all these things are the beginning of sorrows. Then they'll deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you'll be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended will betray one another, will hate one another. 
and many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nation. Then the end will come. Verse 24, For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. It's very clear. Jesus Christ told us. People will come and try and tell you, I'm the Christ. Hey, I reach Christ consciousness. I'm Christ. I'm the same as Jesus. It's a lie. It's a complete lie. The Jesus Christ who came 2,000 years ago is the Jesus Christ. He is the same today, yesterday, and forever. He's not going to change. He doesn't change. No one else is Jesus Christ. No one else reached the same state of consciousness as him. And when you know that, you can begin to follow him as he truly is. You can begin to walk the path of truth. You can begin to grow in the spirit. You can begin to grow deeply in what is true love and holiness and righteousness. You can begin to receive his forgiveness for your sins and truly have that washed away. Until then, thinking that you're God, that you can reach this Godhood through meditation, hours a day, fasting, 21-day juice fast, and you know, activating all your chakras and going through kundalini yoga to cleanse out all the negative energy and the stored and blocked emotions in your body to activate your DNA and all these things. Follow Jesus Christ. He is God. He is perfect. He is the Savior. And He is Lord. Simple as that. Let me go on to the next point. Point number three. The promise of Godhood is the first lie told to man by Satan in the garden. This is what it says in Genesis chapter 3, verses 3 through 5. And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. In 1 John 3 through 8, we read about Jesus coming to destroy the works of the devil. The first work of which was to convince man that they could become God. Jesus came to fix that problem that this belief caused. It's nothing new. It's ancient. It's the same belief that you can become like God. It's the same lie. Point number four is this. John the Baptist was claimed to be the most spiritually advanced man ever by Jesus. And Jesus said this in Luke chapter 7. He said, For I say to you, among those born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. But he who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. Yet John denied being Christ twice when they asked him. So if the greatest man ever isn't Christ and professed to be Christ or attained some state of Christ consciousness, then clearly Christ is not a state of consciousness. It's a human being. John the Baptist didn't read it. And it's not some state of consciousness that these spiritually ascended, spiritually advanced people reach. Jesus never taught that. John the Baptist rebuked the arrogant. He called people to repent. He did the same things. He prepared the way for Jesus Christ to come. Now, when we actually look at the word Christos in the Greek, it's used 538 times in the New Testament. And never, not once, is it ever used as an it or an impersonal force or some state of mind. It's never used like that. It is personified only as a he. Christos is used as a he. Because Christ is not a state of consciousness, not a Christed state or, or you know, that vibration or energy that you can tap into or achieve. Christ is a human being. Christ walked on this earth. The Bible says the word became flesh, made his dwelling among us. The people around Christ, the people who lived with him, they, they touched him, they felt him, they hugged him. You know, Apostle John was laying on his bosom, beloved by Christ. He wept for people. He had emotions. You know, he is a person. And we see that in the text. We see that in the scripture. And number six is that Jesus wasn't floating around in some transcendent euphoric bliss. You know, this Christ consciousness of being in this blissed state, this Christed state. 
No, he, he wasn't doing that. He was actually expressing many emotions and many, you know, personal expressions. He was mourning and weeping over the death of Lazarus. The verse that says Jesus wept. You know, he was grieving in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was angry at all the greed and corruption found in his temple. He was confrontational with the hypocrites, calling them brood of vipers, sentenced to hell, whose father is of the devil. He was animated. He wasn't just blissed out, meditating for hours on end in the mountains, reaching some state of consciousness, coming and telling people he broke out of the cycle of suffering and, you know, they just need to reach this state of samadhi or nirvana and break free and, and go through this process of meditating for hours on end. No, he was in the world. He was communicating with people. He was living life. He was a carpenter for many years of his life. He was eating and, and celebrating and turning water into wine at a wedding and he experienced life. He didn't just escape and go meditate for hours on end and say, that's the answer. That's the answer to life. Because it's not. The Hindus believe that that's the answer. The Buddhists believe that that's the answer. You go into the mountains, you go in a cave, you completely seclude yourself and you try and break out of the cycle of reincarnation. You try and reach this blissed state, this samadhi or nirvana. And no, Christ did not teach that. Christ did not go to India. There's no evidence anywhere in all of our historical texts that Jesus ever went to India and taught anything related to the Hindu religion or the Buddhist religion. It's actually the opposite. What he taught opposed the doctrines of the people who believed those things, the ancient sages of India. The teachings of Christ do not align with the teachings of Buddhism or Hinduism or Taoism. That's just a fact. The final point number seven is this, that the Bible tells us very clearly that we're not some divine beings who can ascend to Godhood. Let me just read a few scriptures for you. In Psalm chapter 9 verse 20 it says this, Make them tremble in fear, O Lord. Let the nations know they are merely human. In Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 9, Will you then boast, I am God, to those who kill you? To them you'll be no God, but merely a man. And actually, when we see in Scripture, those who claim to be gods were actually condemned for it, even issued the death penalty. Take a look at Acts chapter 12, verse 20 through 23. On the appointed day, Herod, wearing his royal robe, sat on his throne and delivered a public address to the people. They shouted, This is the voice of a God, not of a man. Immediately, because Herod did not give praise to God, an angel of the Lord struck him, and he was eaten by worms and died. Take a look at the prophecy against the king of Tyre in Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 1 through 9. It says this, The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, say to the ruler of Tyre, This is what the sovereign Lord says. In the pride of your heart you say, I am a God. I sit on the throne of a God in the heart of the seas. But you're a mere mortal and not a god, though you think you're as wise as a god. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, Because you think you're wise, as wise as a god, I'm going to bring foreigners against you, the most ruthless of nations. They'll draw their swords against your beauty and wisdom and pierce your shining splendor. They'll bring you down to the pit, and you will die a violent death in the heart of the seas. Will you then say, I am a god in the presence of those who kill you? You'll be but a mere mortal, not a god, in the hands of those who slay you. Take a look at Isaiah chapter 14, talking about Lucifer, verses 12 through 15. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. What Jesus truly taught was that he is Lord and Savior. We are mere human beings. We're created by him. We were corrupted by sin through our own actions and we're in need of forgiveness. If we repent and we trust in him, we receive the gift of eternal life and that's when we enter into a relationship with him. You know, it's not by our own works or ascension, meditation or enlightenment, 
It's through repentance. It's through faith in his death, in his burial, in his resurrection. Those are historical facts. That's when we truly know our creator. The whole Christ consciousness deception, that whole thing is about detaching you from the reality that God is a personal being, that Jesus Christ was a person. He's alive today. He speaks to us today. Those who are of the truth hear his voice. That's what Jesus said. Those who are of the truth hear his voice. Not as a mere energy or state of consciousness that he reached. He is the creator. He created everything, all the laws of physics, all the laws that we're discovering through the scientific method, the laws of gravity, laws of mathematics. Jesus Christ created this entire reality. It's not a state of consciousness that you can achieve. And I want to encourage you. When you know this truth, when you know who Christ truly is, your life changes forever. Your life changes completely forever. And the Bible says that we are actually complete in Him. Focus on Him. Seek Him. Seek to know Him. He will speak to you. The Holy Spirit, when He comes to dwell in you, when you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has greater powers than every single psychic power, every single power that comes from the monks of Buddhism, of Taoism, the yogis of Hinduism, which honestly... They can do some pretty crazy supernatural things. I've seen it. I've seen a lot of crazy supernatural things, yet the Holy Spirit is far more powerful. Jesus Christ is above every other principality, power, ruler of the air, every spiritual being. Jesus Christ is above. Go directly to the source. The source is not an energy, a consciousness, an energy that you tap into. The source is Jesus Christ who created all things. By him, all things were made the Bible says. Seek after him. I urge you. I hope this is an informative teaching for you, for people who are curious about the subject, for people who might genuinely believe that Jesus taught this or that this is what the Bible says and that, you know, the books of the Bible were taken out where he teaches this. Well, that wouldn't add up because even if the books, you had the books today that you seemingly place more faith in than the true historical fact that we have, these books that supposedly exist, many of them Gnostic teachings, which we do have Gnostic teachings today, they completely contradict the majority of the other texts that we have describing what Jesus Christ said as he was on earth, what he taught. So it still wouldn't negate the truth of what Jesus Christ taught in the historical texts that we have. And no, they were not edited. And yes, we have seen this book of Isaiah and the Dead Sea Scrolls with a 99.9% .9 accuracy. And it's the truth. The Bible is the truth. The Word of God is the truth. And I urge you to seek after Jesus. Continue to serve Him faithfully. And know that He is the answer. He is the way, the truth, and the life. God bless you. And have a great day as always.